I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I heard a story recently about a woman who had reached 101 years of age. And coming from a family with multiple centenarians, this of course caught my attention. So when she reached this milestone, the local news organization sought to interview this woman and learn her secret to long life. The reporter asked that simple question, to what do you attribute your long life? And after taking time to reflect, the woman replied, I never argue. The reporter wanted a good soundbite, something he could take to his audience, and this was not the response he expected. So very indignantly he said, oh, that can't be it. It must be something like exercise or eating the proper foods or even drinking a glass of wine each night. To which the woman replied, perhaps you're correct. <laughs> Our centenarian friend did not let a good argument get in the way of making her point. So Abraham was a powerful man and an important man. And when he and his wife Sarah traveled, they would have been accompanied by family and many servants. Yet in the heat of the day, as three men approached his tent, Abraham would become the servant to these strangers. He said to these travelers, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that, you may pass on. St. Paul writes in his letter to the Hebrews, Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. So Abraham would not have known Paul's writings, obviously. They would be centuries later. But he did know of his responsibility to offer hospitality. And St. Paul is, of course, writing in reference to this chapter in Genesis, to Abraham's encounter with these three men. Paul would know that this encounter was believed to be a meeting with three angels. And later, this encounter would be interpreted as a meeting with the Holy Trinity. But we can save that thought and Rublev's icon of the Trinity for another day. So at the noonday sun, Abraham was sitting in the shade of the great oak tree. Three men appeared before him, and without judgment, without qualification, Abraham offered hospitality to the strangers. The Jewish faith, as well as most major religions make hospitality a priority. For our Jewish sisters and brothers, a phrase that they are very familiar with is the call to offer hospitality. For you were strangers in a strange land. We have all been strangers in a strange land. Take a moment and think back when that was for you. And don't take the words literally. You don't need a passport to be in a strange land. Middle school is a strange land, especially when you first transition to that new part of your education. A new workplace can be a strange land. And of course, travel can bring you to a strange land. Even coming to a new church can feel like being a stranger in a strange land. So think about it for a moment. When were you a stranger in a strange land? 
And then think about who was the person who welcomed you with a heart of hospitality. And I'm confident in saying that everyone here has experienced this. We've all been a stranger in a strange land. And I say this because we're all guests in this strange land and recipients of God's hospitality. And it's through this receipt of God's hospitality that we're obligated to share the same. Abraham shows us that he has a heart of hospitality. And I'm going to suggest that there is an ever so slight difference between having a heart for hospitality and a heart of hospitality. Many people are welcoming, but we're human, so the welcome may be accompanied with judgment and qualifiers. And let me share with you what I mean. Without going into too many specifics, I'll share that in the recent months, I was part of a meeting where someone said that the organization that they're a part of openly welcomed a particular group of other people. This person went on to say, and I paraphrase now for brevity, that this group was welcome as long as they behaved like us, acted like us, and talked like us. This offensive and repulsive statement was said with the banality of welcoming someone who rooted for the wrong sports team. In reality, the person's statement was racist to the core. Their offer of hospitality was deeply rooted in racism. As welcoming as this person felt that they were, they do not have a heart of hospitality. So I realize that cruising our church website is seldom some people's idea of a good time or their hobby. So many of you may not be aware of the welcome statement that appears on the St. John's website. So I will share it. If you are Asian, Hispanic, black, or white, if you are male or female or transgender, if you are three days old, 30 years old, or 103 years old, if you've never stepped foot in a church, or if you have a strong faith, questioning faith, no faith, or simply need a place to rest, if you are single, married, divorced, separated, or partnered, if you are straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or queer, if you are Republican, Democrat, Independent, Socialist, or not even registered to vote, if you have or had addictions, phobias, or regrets, if you own your home, rent, live with your parents, or are homeless, if you are fully abled, disabled, or a person of differing abilities, you are welcome here at St. John's. This statement should not be limited to the welcome at St. John's, but should be lifted up by each of us and in all that we do. And this should transform our heart from a heart for to a heart of hospitality. In the middle of Pride Month, and on the eve of Juneteenth and World Migrant Day, it is no surprise that we are surrounded by anti-Semitism, sexism, ableism, ageism, classism, elitism, racism, sizeism, nativism, homophobia, transphobia, and so many more ways to hate the other among us. And none of these isms or phobias speak of hospitality. They are all a manifestation of fear. Fear is insidious because it shows itself, it manifests itself 
in so many different ways that it can hide in plain sight. And sadly, fear is contagious. It spreads like wildfire. Fear is not of God. Only love is of God. And thankfully, love always overcomes fear. Welcoming others without love is hollow at best. It's still fear. Opening your door only matters if you also open your heart. The heart of hospitality is open, welcoming, affirming, and loving. And this love is contagious. Because of the sheer volume of ways that people can and do hate or offer something less than true hospitality, it's wise to notice the words of Jesus as he reminds us that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We are the laborers. We have been called and are sent out. We are to teach, to proclaim the good news, and to cure the diseases of hate. We're to love. We're to show the world and show those who hate that with love, God's abundant love, we can create hearts of hospitality. So, admittedly, when I was in that meeting a few months ago, when the person said, we of course welcome these people who don't look like us, as long as they act like us, and talk like us, and think like us, I clearly did not heed the advice of our centenarian friend to not let a good argument get in the way of the mission. I might have raised my voice, laughed at some of the preposterous statements, and was generally appalled at the racism that was on display. I could have done a better job at illuminating the mission that love overcomes hate. Sadly, I know that I will have many other opportunities to do better. And with God's help, I will do better. I will show what it means to have a heart of hospitality. I'll show that love overcomes hate, always. The harvest is plentiful, and the laborers are few. Each of us, from three years old to 103 years young, are being sent into the field to reap the harvest with love. And remember, don't let a good argument get in the way of the mission. Amen.